Hey guys, quick video. Coolants ain't coolants. Um, you've heard oils, you heard soul. Remember the old Castrol ad? Soul. Oils ain't oils. Well, I've got to tell you something. Oils are oils. I've said it before. Not exactly, but what oil you use isn't really that important. It's more important that you change it, regular changes as per the requirements of the manufacturer or, or as per the requirements of the engine when you just sort of use your brain and think a bit and you go, well, that manufacturer says to do that. And so if they're stretching it out, not a good idea, but this one's not about oil, it's about coolant. So oils ain't oil, oils and coolants ain't coolants, but we're sort of saying, well, oils are oils. A lot of people get worried about what oil they're gonna use. Like in the 1KD, I've got to tell you, the engines are that strong. You can put the crappiest oil, whatever you want. It ain't gonna hurt it, it's gonna protect it. Obviously better oils have got better and more additives and they're gonna be a bit better, but it's only a small amount better. You know what I mean? Now, obviously that's a general comment and it varies widely, but I would say what's more important kind of is coolant, which is why we're talking about, let's get in there a bit closer and have a look at that coolant there, right? So coolants ain't coolant. Well, are they coolants or not? Well, of course they're coolant. <laughs> what is, let's just quickly, so, so what's it there for? What's the coolant? We call it coolant. You know, what does this say here? Engine coolant, right? Uh, 1,008 kPa engine coolant. Okay, so what's it there for? Does it make your engine run cool? Not really. Uh, so we're gonna answer a few here, a bit of a Q&A with myself here. What are the questions you guys might ask at the end of this video? Uh, yeah, so what's it there for? What does it do? Um, is it there to make the engine cool? Well, uh, not really. Uh, if you didn't have coolant and you had water in there, it's going to do basically the same job, okay? You know, I'm not going to be scientific scientist, you know, whatever, uh, but pretty much it's not going to make any difference for a day or a week or whatever the case may be. The main reason we've got what we call coolant in there is for the corrosion inhibitors, okay? So, Obviously, water and metals, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, alloys or cast or whatever the case may be, every material reacts differently to water and the rust or corrosion, whatever the case may be. The main additives are there to keep everything clean because obviously when all the internal components of the engine, the radiator, the uh, heater core, everything's, there's a lot of small channels in there. We're talking a millimeter or two in a lot of cases and you start getting a buildup of rust or corrosion it reduces the flow and reduces the effectiveness of your cooling system. So the most important part really is that rust protection. Now, there's some other things it does do, it depends what country you're in and what climate. Some people are going, no, nah, it's not just there for that. That is the main thing. Because most climates, it's not really gonna help with uh, keeping it cooler or not boiling or, uh, uh, you know, older cars, the cooling system was crap, right? They hadn't figured it out yet. Things were new one day. Once upon a time, things were new and you know, they get better at it, okay? As we all do, you get better as you get older. Don't you wish you knew and you could do uh, what you can do when you're 40, 50 or 60 when you were uh, 17, uh, 23 and 28, yeah? It'd be, <laughs> it'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And would it be even better if our kids listened to us because we know that and we're trying to educate them and help them understand that, but you know, it's harder than it seems, doesn't it? You think it'd be simple. You know, you can lead the whatever. I'm not gonna say I can lead the horse. You can lead the dog to water, but you can't make a drink. There you go, something different. But look, the deal is number one, we want to stop the uh, corrosion. Once upon a time, it was also to stop it boiling, okay? So anti-boil, so there's additives in there to increase the boiling point. And it may be of his assistance sometimes, so I'll give you an idea. With the 1KD, it's just one example here, but the normal operating range quoted by the manufacturer is 75 to 90 degrees. Now, I can tell you the thermostats when everything's working right, whether it's a 1KD or a 1GD or many other diesels like that, you know, other cars, they run at a warmer temp. There's an ideal temp that they're designed to run. Um, these, 83 degrees at idle, okay? So 83 at idle, which happens to be right between 75 and 90. So that's the ideal temperature for the engine and of course for the transmission temp as well because, you know, this isn't about transmission temp, but since the transmission oil goes through this side of the radiator, that's obviously what they run, what it running at, 83, 85, uh, that's the ideal temperature. We don't want it running cold, just like we don't want the engine running cold and we don't want it running hot, ideally, you know, ideally. So. When you're driving the vehicle, the temperature is quite often going to be 84, 85, 86, 87 in that range. That's good. It can be 88, 89. That's good. Anything up to 90 is okay. But 
I would suggest if you're going over 90, you've got some airflow restrictions, you've got some bugs, dust, dirt, you've got other things mounted in the way of your cooling system reducing its efficiency. That shouldn't really happen. So it's not the coolant that's needed to stop it boiling, it's other changes. My point is water boils at 100 degrees, right? This stuff here, it's gonna, I don't know the boiling point of that one, it doesn't matter. So it all depends how much glycol, whatever the mix is, whatever chemicals they're using and how much is in there as to what the boiling point is, okay? It might be 102, it could be 107, 112, 120, whatever. It all depends what additives, what product you're using. I wanna be clear, not so important because if we're not seeing 100 degrees, there ain't anything boiling, is there, right? So, but. It's in there, okay? And then there's also antifreeze. That's the other end of the scale, right? To stop it freezing, because when water freezes, once you start going below zero, right? I hope I've got all my scientific mathematics. That's the stuff they taught us in primary school, right? So it was a long time ago. You know, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure it's about zero. You know, it'll start to ice up a little bit. The colder you go, the more it ices up. I don't know, technically frozen could be something like four or eight degrees minus, you know, whatever. But Something like that. You can figure that out somewhere else. This isn't about, you know, a physics channel, is it, right? Ballpark kind of freezing point, about about zero. So if you go up the snow and it's minus two, minus three, minus five, or you're in another country, if you live, we've got a lot of viewers in, I don't know, Norway, I think, sounds like a pretty cold place to me, doesn't it, you know? I haven't travelled a, a lot of the world or anything like that. I'll travel Australia. One day we'll get all that done and dusted. It's a big place. And then we'll get bored. And all you viewers, I'm going to be saying, hey, I'm headed to Canada. Who can tell me where to go? Who's got a, you know, where's the best accommodation? What's the best things to see there? So um, stay tuned for that call. But at the moment, we are busy traveling, exploring, and on our other YouTube channel, documenting um, tracks and places and trips and awesome places to go that people can do in their own vehicles in Australia. So whether you're a tourist, whether you're new to four-wheel driving, or whether you're experienced, you can certainly get something out of that, that channel. 4 before Touring Australia. So one word, like 4 before Diesel, 4 before Touring Space Australia, right? Se complete separate word. Look that one up. Subscribe. If you can't find it, just search Crazy Snow Trip. That comes up pretty well. When you find that video, if it's 4 before Touring Australia, subscribe. Turn the bell on. Now, back to this one, right? We're nearly done. It's pretty cool, right? So which coolant? We're getting there, but we're giving you the reasons why. Some people are saying, ah, oh, get to the point. And everyone else is going, I love the waffle. I love all this information. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you information. All you need to do is listen to the end. And if you've listened this far, please go now and give us a thumbs up so that we know you're listening. This one's going to have heaps of likes and heaps of thumbs up from the people that are listening, right? I wish I could work out the percentage of people that, you know, I've got a fair idea who the listeners are. Anyway, so you've got freezing, you've got boiling, you've got anti-rust. There are your three main reasons it's there. The main one, anti-corrosion, want to keep it clean so it's in peak operating condition. One of the biggest problems you can have is coolant mixes. Yeah, so, you know, different coolants, they can coagulate, do weird things, whatever, so you don't want any of that. Uh, this should be that color, not green, not blue, not yellow, not really even purple. If it's got a purpley color in there, now, we're going to, just be clear on this. You need to wait till the end. I'm going to be as clear as I can. There's some other coolants that are slightly purple that could look like some genuine coolant. There's another one that's more of a red colour. I'll describe it the best I can. Now, what you've got in our 1KD here, this is super long life coolant. I'm going to zoom in a bit more and I'm going to get a light. Oh, I'm just going to get a light. Where's that light gone? Hang on. I'm going to go for a run and get a light. Hang on a sec. I know you love it, but I've got to go and get the light. <laughs> All right, we've got the light. See, it only took a little bit. That was time for you to grab your drink. I just want to see if the light makes any difference to what that coolant looks like, right? You know, I just want to sort of light it up for you. It's like, I will describe that as a, it's kind of a pinky red, okay? It's hard, it, out in daylight, it may look different, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard to tell, but rest assured, that is to genuine Toyota Super Long Life coolant. Why do we recommend you use that? Well, if we all use the same stuff, then there's no mixes. We all know what we're using. Will the pen right be okay? Yes. You've got to mix it yourself. You've got to introduce water. Have you got a good water filter, clean water? Um, by the time you do that, whatever, for the sake of, I can tell you, I've done the sums. We used to use the pen right in the workshop. Nothing wrong with it in my opinion, but I haven't used it as long. It's not as tried and tested as the genuine stuff, right? And for the sake of the XA, it's going to cost you for two 10 litre super long life cool, it's going to cost you about 70 or 80 bucks, something like that, right? By the time you do the pen right thing, it's going to cost you about 40 or 50 bucks, right? So you're saving 20, 30 bucks. What, every few years, 20, 30 dollars? 
Don't muck around with it. It's already mixed, ready to go. That's what we do. It's on the shelf. Now, for the older vehicles like the 1KZ diesel, right? That I prefer in those, the older, I think they're all compatible and you can upgrade to whatever, but I don't worry about why in this video. We're getting towards the end. I prefer the long life coolant, so it's not super long life. It's more of a red color. It's Don't worry about what's in your vehicle. If you're not sure what's in there, you can't do too many oil changes. You can't do too many coolant changes. You can't do too many brake fluid changes. You can't do too many oil changes. You're wasting your time and wasting oil, but you're not gonna hurt it. So if you purchase a vehicle and, oh, look at this, looks all right, but I'm not sure what's in there, drop it out, okay? If you've got a 1KD or a 1GD, most of the V6s, you're gonna put the super long life coolant in just about everything. If you've got a 1KZ, my preference is the long life coolant, okay? Now, I've told you which coolants to use on those vehicles. Sorry for everyone else. Can't go through every make and model and manufacturer. Um, a lot of vehicles, the genuine coolant is not really that exciting compared to, sorry, there's some aftermarket ones that are kind of like just as good or better than, because some brands, I'm not gonna name brands, I'm gonna need to bag other brands. They use crap cheap mixes of coolant. They don't last. They go brown and discolor sooner. The rust and corrosion starts sooner. This Toyota stuff, I don't know if it's the materials they use in the engine, the radiator, the heater core. It's protecting so much, guys. Welsh plugs from corroding away. Heater cores, that's your dash out in a lot of cars. To, you know, radiators aren't cheap. Water pumps, other components, some cars, springs in hoses, not really so much anymore, but lots of things rust and corrode away. It's cheap insurance. Okay, so with the Toyotas, the ones we specialize in, that's what we're talking about mainly here. Something for the rest of you to think about. Um, Bada bing, we're out of here. Please remember to be subscribed and turn that bell on so you get this important information explained really clear to you as it happens so you don't fall behind. I've got a few people complaining. There's so many videos, I can't find it. The search function works. I'll explain it again. Use less words. If you say, how do I change my water pump on a 1K to no results? because you've put too many words. Just write water pump, see what you get. Write uh, BFE, see what you get. Say change water pump, see what you get. Less words, different variations, you get a lot of results. Search our YouTube channel. If you're in the VIP group, you can search when I post the videos up. I try and use the right words, but we've got this for the people that waited. Yeah, I'm still going, sorry, it's information. I apologize for taking up so much of your time. Don't worry about my time. Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is playlists, okay? So you go onto our YouTube channel on your computer or on your phone. You should be able to find playlists either way, right? I don't want to tell you what you can do. I don't know what phone you've got. I don't know what tablet you've got. I don't know if you're on the, the website. I don't know what you're on. You're on all sorts of devices, but you should be able to find our playlists, not your playlists, our playlists that are public, right? So I've spent hours putting videos into playlists. So there might be a heading called injector replacement. It might be called one... Kaon products. One might be called suspension or dominance and suspension. One might be called the BFE timing belt water pump job or something like that, right? And it's got 10 or 5 or 20 or 40 videos under that. You go watch them all. Don't tell me which one. I mean, if I've done the videos, it means there's more information. Like this one right now, I've talked about coolant before, but this I've been clearly and concise as ever. But does that mean there's not going to be a better video coming in the future that's shorter and more concise with more up-to-date information? There could be. That's why you subscribe with the bell on. Thanks for watching, guys. Bada bing, bada boom, okay?